Joe, it never, people who've been before will agree with me, I hope, that it never fails to amaze me, the wonderful intimacy of this evening. Even though we're in this massive room, somehow the words seem to be speaking to us all. I had this ridiculous idea where I thought we could do a version of this where we selected 12 members of the audience and we all went round to their house, one at a time, like carol singers, and knocked on their door and did our poems. And then, But that wouldn't work because it, it wouldn't have the intimacy of this evening. Um, finally, in this half, the fantastic Vani Capildeo. This book of Vani is, is a book with poems in it, with prose in it, with writing that's somewhere in between, which is, as I've said, a trend this year. I'm really excited, as a chap who quite likes novels, but really likes poetry, to see not po more poets writing more prose. Wouldn't that be exciting if more poets wrote more novels and the novelists had to go off and perhaps tend sheep somewhere? Um, <laughs> in a novelist kind of way, they involve plot and characters. And it seems to me this book is about identity and about the fluidity of identity and the fluidity of trying to find a form to do that justice. And that's what this book does so well. And also it is like many of our books tonight, a deeply, deeply serious book, making lots of other serious books that you might have read before. You think, you look at them, you think, that's not really serious. The book that I thought was serious before is in fact wearing a red nose and enormous clown shoes, because this is a really, really fantastic, fantastic serious books book, Vani Capildeo. Hello and happy 2017, or whichever year this is uh, in the calendar whose revolutions you may follow. You are permitted to laugh. <laughs> the poet transformed into a box hedge. It was a small snail on a rainy day. It was a small snail, a petal vertex. It was a small snail nestled ascendant, the heart of a rose, an apricot rose. And for a small snail on a rainy day, the sea was beating about my heart. Oh, love, beating about my green heart of hearts. I love you. I love you, he wouldn't say. It was against his philosophy. I love you didn't mean what it meant. Plus the very construction of the phrase caused bad old concrete loam and vandal verbal mildew upon the grape harvest and war for rare minerals required to manufacture communications devices damage. Saying I love you damaged love, subject and object. Plus he could prove this into dense and Delphic languages suitable for philosophy, opera, cursing, and racking the nerves of artificial intelligence machines that perhaps could love, but would be hardwired jamais to dare say so. So what moved him to not say, I love you? What wake up and spoil the coffee, ashtray licking gin? I have to start to agree. The verbness of it, impropriety. Eyes glob up the syringe when you're giving blood. Semi-solid spiraling. Perhaps too active? I love you, I sand you, I drill you. I honey and set you for wasps. Crimson you like a stolen toga. Add value, applying dye. Fight ownership. I cite you to justify skilled outrage. Put your name as guarantor on an astronomical mortgage. I admit, desertification comes as a relief from I to O, O my oasis, O my mirage. Maybe the verb is attending towards a tightrope, a tropism, a station, but that's meeting him on his own ground, 
plus I can't disprove entire languages, plus those three little words aren't meant as saying, an icy drink in stormlight, a looked at leaf left to transpire its own way until, and psalms I love you, the centuried moon rose above dinner mint stone. Many men continued talking. A woman lifted her sarsenet skirt, peed on green lilies, and utterly gracious, walked through the archway to join the mixed group delighting in word, believe it, fresh air. Pobre filio tam. Only I do not like the fashion of your garments. You will say they are Persian attire, but let them be changed. Shakespeare, King Lear, Act 3, Scene 6. Raise your game, said my friend, lucky in love, since going online to learn moves that lead from geek to player. Go to the big Baldwin city. Life's laid out like your sister's tea set. That time she spilled the milk and didn't cry for a real melting knife. Shamied my head and was going, radiant as a hermit's cave in Cappadocia. Fled him and my other dogs and wallpapered my sister's braced smile in carious photographs. Well, Caramel, you can cross, pass, Shoot for the stars, scrape sky for a living, but don't hang your washing from the window. The old man doesn't like it. And see that tree? It translates. Spring will bring again bread, stone, scorpion to hand. Always afternoon, if once you stand in his light. I prayed for liftoff and became a little horse, shadowed by an always car. I prayed for inside, needed shadow like a crown on my head, lived off foods composed of substitutions. Lady of situations, I pray for lift off, tailoring my head and bust to rise above this city of uncadare nature, Pushkin types, fatalistic pedestrians who are at the start of my game, who are my true loves, if only their hearts were Gabriel and not being Borges to death, staying off the drive-by streets, mummified in the seven-sealed orifices first named home. The last thing is a section from a poem called All Your Houses, which was partly inspired by Aimé Césaire and partly by the Trinidadian poet and artist André Bagou's photographs of abandoned, decaying buildings. Why, in a conversation with someone who is not well and asks me, do you believe in God? Do I say, no, not really. When at other times to other people I say and mean that I believe in gods. Why does she look at me without much surprise while telling me that like all atheists, I'm on the path to the devil and that my name will be forgotten after I die. Why does my name being forgotten make me think not of being prayed for, but of literary records and the traces of their destruction? Why, when she told me how much time she spent praying for people in detail, did I think, that must take very long. Why did she bestow social embrace on a damned person? Why did I promise her to read the Bible? Why did I think it is context? The grown-ups not far away are playing Scrabble. Three children under the age of five are on the sofa. I am sitting with the children, the television is on. The eldest asks, why is the man on the road dead? Three pairs of similarly carved eyes turn their luminosity on me. The second eldest says, I know what is die. It is going to the hospital and staying a long time. Three pairs of eyes. I say, no, it's not always like that. It's usually more like going to sleep 
Everyone dies. Many people die when they are old. The man on the road on the news may or may not have been one of the bandits who died in a shootout near the airport. They were shot after throwing a hand grenade through the window of a policeman's car. The car went up in flames. The policeman, whose nickname was Police, died. He happened to be a friend of the family. Three pairs of eyes resumed their childishness, one stage further on. To be looked at as if one is neutral ground, to identify with the narrative voice when one reads novels, to have no child in a house where the women are women together. What about the instantaneous alerts of kindness? What about belly dancing? Salmon strips of light in the sky? The saffron ceremony at night in the river? Is it true that the growth curve of fish never plateaus out? What would it mean to live with the flame turned low? What is the freedom of thought enshrined in the Constitution if the evening constitutional is a few paces for the remote control? Why do you want to live over there? Because I can walk around at night on my own. But why you want to walk around at night on your own? To be looked at as if one is neutral ground. Thank you. Thank you very much, the fantastic Vanny Keppel Dale. Uh, there'll be a short interval now. All the poets who've read and the ones who haven't read yet, all their books are on sale. Please buy them and then they'll be happy to sign them at the end. And we'll see you all in half an hour. Thank you very much. <laughs>